What's up gamers, Proto here, and this has been a long awaited video that I have been looking forward to doing. As you can see, I finally got all my components in, so I am going to be building my PC. So today you guys are going to watch me build it as I talk about putting it together. Now, I put them all together real quick so you guys can see what is going on with it. You can see all the components going to be going with it. And if you know your PC know how, you know some of these parts are high end. So this will be a high end gaming PC. Now, one component that I don't have up here right now is my uh, hard drive. Because as you guys see, I will be using an SSD, one terabyte, but I'll also be putting in a four terabyte regular standard hard drive. I just I just don't have a case box for that. It just kind of came in a pre-packaged brown box. So kind of put that to the side, but I will be showing it in the video. But this is more or less everything that's going to be going on with it. You guys see, like I said, it's going to be a high-end gaming rig. Putting in a 2080 card, going with a Core i9 processor, and making sure I got good power with an AX1000 series. And we're going to have a little RGB lighting going in it with it with the memory cards, the cooling system, and we're using the Fantex case. Now this case already came with two fans, but I'm actually going to be switching them out for some RGB fans. So I'll be switching those out. So let's not waste any more time and let's get into building this PC. So before we get started into the build, I just want to show you guys a little bit up close more of the case. As you can see, this is a pretty good size case and I chose this because I plan on expanding and adding some more stuff into it. Really, your case should be what you really want it to be. If you want to keep it small and simple, if you want a big one, if you want to expand. Like you said, right here you have multiple trays here where I can put in several hard drives if I want to. If I want to put in extra drives or anything, like if I want to put in a CD drive or anything, I have that. I can use that for shelves. On the other side, pretty much is the cable management, and I'll show that to you guys real quick. But otherwise, you have down here, this pretty much covers the power supply that'd be at the bottom. So at this one, your power supply will be at the bottom. As you guys can see, you have one fan here that will be switched out, and then the other stock fan that is here, that will be switched out where I have my cooler. I'm actually gonna have my cooler being at the top, and putting the stock fan in place there. So how I plan on having it, I'm gonna have airflow coming from the back and going up to the front because it's gonna be under my desk. But this is a large area above my desk so the air can dissipate out from it. And I'll flip it around and show you guys the back side so you can see how the cable management is set up. All right, and as you guys can see, pretty much cable management, they already have some areas already set up for cables running through. So that would definitely come in handy. And a lot of the cables are pretty much where they have it and to where I need to put them. And they had these little holes so I can just flood them out. And I really like this because it keeps the cable management hidden. Because this is pretty much on the back side of it. So on the back side, you just have this piece here. So that's what covers it up. So if I ever need to rerun wires or add something into it, all I gotta do is open the back. I really don't have to go through the front unless I'm unhooking something. And like I said, these are the extra drive ports here. So if I wanna put in extra hard drives, which I plan on doing later on in the future, I have plenty of room. It's easy as the snapping, pull out, put your drive in and then slide it back in, which I think is real convenient. So that being said, let's talk a little bit about hardware now hardware wise you're definitely going to need a screwdriver to do a lot of the most work on this um, some of the screwdrivers you're probably going to need you're probably going to need a uh, Phillips head type one and two for some of the hardware but this is going to be your main workhorse now of course you're going to need some zip ties or velcros for when you're doing your cable management but we'll talk about that when it comes up to it and pretty much you're going to be using the items they already provide for you like i said with this case it came with a bunch of extra zip ties um extra stuff that i need to use in case i need it along with other hardware i need so let's not so let's start off first with the motherboard and the processor all right next we're going to work with the motherboard and as you see we have the rog strix x299e gaming motherboard 
Now before I go in any further, I do need to say this and I forgot to mention earlier. Make sure you have something to hold all your screws and everything. For mine, I'm using a little bowl, but whatever works for you. You know, a lot of people use magnetic bowls. Whatever, what, honestly, whatever works for you. And also before you touch any of these parts, make sure you are static free. Make sure you're not doing this on any type of carpet that generates electricity. Because normally I do all my editing and everything in videos that I will be doing in my gaming room. Because it's carpeted, I'm trying to reduce static electricity. So that's why I'm doing it more or less in my dining area on a metal floor. Make sure you always ground yourself. If you want to get one of the little grounding cables that you can put on your wrist, that's perfectly fine. Most times, just put your hand against something metal. For me, I put my hand against my metal case, touch a couple of different metal things, and then good to go. So like I said, first we're going to start with the motherboard. So with the motherboard, you have a couple of key essential pieces along with just the motherboard. As we open it up, we can take a look at all the things inside. Now, of course, we have the motherboard. I'm going to take this out nice and simple. Open that up. Pull that out. We're going to leave that in there for right now. We've got the instruction manual. Very important to always read your instruction manual. It'll probably tell you a lot of information on what you need for certain things depending on your build, depending on what you're using. Because if you're using an AMD processor or if you're using an Intel processor, it might tell you, you might need to use specific type of mouse for it. So make sure to take the time to actually just skim through it and read through it. It probably answer a lot of questions for you. Also, it looks like it has the operating software for it because it does have a little RGB light on it and this would be good for when we load up our drives. Also, and I forgot to mention it earlier, make sure you have a thumb drive. If you don't have internet capability, as soon as you have this hooked up, make sure you have all the drives installed on a thumb drive. That way you can just load up the drives. But if you have internet capability, which I plan on doing once I get this put together, then you can just go online, download the drivers once you get the operating system in. So, that being said, we're going to use the motherboard box to place the motherboard on and to do our work on. That way, that way it reduces the electricity, it keeps it up high, so if we miss anything, we can look for it. So for right now, I'm just going to leave it in that until we pull it out. We'll take a look at what we got inside the box that came with it. Usually the other additional things that you would need with the motherboard. Open that up real quick. Let's see what we got inside. Yep, and it's the usual things. You're gonna have cables, extra pieces for you to use. This right here looks like a wi uh, wireless Wi-Fi, so all works for you. Now, also, a very important thing that I am looking for on this is the IO shield, and they may be still be in the box. Look at that real quick. Yep right here I always check the boxes on the side as well so we got some more stuff some more zip ties that we can use for cable management we'll put that to the side some more extra cables depending on how we hook up and one thing that we're looking for is the IO shield make sure you go ahead and take that out and put that to the side because you'll want to put this on before you hook up your motherboard so now that we got all the little extra things, so check the other side, make sure. Yep. More extra stuff. So it's just basically additional cables, depending on how you want to hook up everything. So let's take all that out and basically put it aside. Don't really open anything yet, but just put it to the side. Because right now we are fo focusing on the motherboard. So we'll close this back up. Like I said. And we're going to be focusing right now on the motherboard itself. So, we're going to take it out of its wrapping. Be very gentle with this. You see, the plastic that they bring it in has is a static protection to help reduce static electricity on it. So, we're going to remove this because we don't need that anymore because we're going to be using the box. And you're pretty much going to take this out of the plastic and place it on the box. Now, 
when you use this, it's very, 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 very important that you touch. And if you have to move the motherboard at any point in time, make sure you touch the sides of it. Never touch the bottom of it. And I'll show you why in a second once I get the rest of the plastic off. All right. So you don't need that. Make sure you always, when you're moving or anything, touch it on the sides. Never grab it from the bottom part because that's where all the sensitive pieces are. So you want to do your best to never touch this with your bare hands, never put any type of liquids or anything on here. If you do anything back here, you'll be putting a mount on here, especially if you're using a type of cooler or different things like that. But otherwise, try to avoid making actual contact with your finger. You see my hands are hovering over it, but it's not touching it. So, with that being said, let's take a look at our motherboard. And let's actually flip it for a second. Matter of fact, let's flip the whole box. We'll do that. So, flip the whole box and take a look, take a quick peek at our motherboard. Now you guys can see roughly, this motherboard has eight slots for RAM, but I'm only gonna be using two for right now. Eventually, I will be putting additional RAM on it, but for right now, we're only gonna be using two. So you've got eight RAM slots for it. You have the processor, which is gonna go here. You actually, for your M2 slot, you actually have several of them. But the one that we're gonna be using is gonna be under this heat shield here, under this heat sink, sorry. So we're gonna unscrew that and we're gonna put our heat sink in there. So for right now, we're gonna focus in on the processor, putting in the processor, putting in the RAM, putting in the heat sink for right now. And then we'll worry about the cooler, which will go on top of the processor here once we get it installed, because that's going to be a two-step process. And it'll be much easier for me to go ahead and install the cooler in and then hook it up to the processor once I get the motherboard in. So let's work with the processor now. Okay, so next we have the core processor. This is your brain of your computer, more or less. And I'm bringing it in a little bit closer so you guys can see. This is a core R9. Now I'm leaving it in the plastic to show you guys the importance of this. When you touch this, you really want to touch this on the sides. I know it's kind of hard to see with the plastic right there, but you really want to touch it on the sides of it. You really don't want to touch the back of it because you don't want to mess up any of these little small pins. If you mess up a, one of these single pins and you don't know how to repair it, you've pretty much ruined the CPU. And depending on how much you put into it, that's it. So this is just quickly what it looks like here in the plastic. Now when we get ready, we're gonna put it in here. It's gonna go in here. Now with this motherboard, most motherboards only have one latch for you to unlock, but this one has two. So at this time, we're going to unlatch it, put it in place so you guys can see. All right, so now we're gonna put our processor into our motherboard. Now, most motorboards only have one latch for you to unlatch, but this one has two. So it all depends, just make sure you read your owner's manual. So for this one, we're gonna start with the latch here. We're gonna unclip this one. Then we'll unclip this one. Now come up. And now that will come up. Oop, put that back up. There we go. Lift that, and now they'll come up. And this is where your processor actually go. Now, there's only one way your processor can go in. Now I know it might be a little bit hard to see, but there's always a little arrow at the very far end to tell you where to line it up at and it's actually right here so and there's an arrow on your processor itself this little gold arrow here so as long as you line it up on those you'll be good so when you put your processor in you just need to just lay it on it and it'll seat into it you don't have to apply any pressure anything like that as long as you line it up everything is good to go so let's go ahead and get it put in remember always touch the sides of it Make sure it's lined up. 
and it should just fall right on in. And now, all you gotta do is close it up. So when you close it up, this right here, this black part will pop off while you latch on these two parts and you'll be good to go. All right, now that we have our processor put in place, all we gotta do now is just lock it down. And we're gonna start with this one. And then this one. Make sure you give it a little bit of pressure. Good to go. Your processor is all good to go. For our next stage in the build, we're going to be putting in our first memory and we're going to be using the Samsung 970 EVO. There we go, got to focus in a little bit. And this is going to be our SATA. We're going to be using the SATA port and we're going to be putting it in other the heatsink here. Now, if I did not want to use the heat sink, however, there are other ports that you can use for it. As you guys see, I move it a little bit closer. I actually have other ports that I can put SATA in. So that's something I can look forward to do later on if I want to. But for right now, we're going to put it on the heat sink. So let's work on getting the heat sink removed off and putting that in place. All right, so this is where it's going to go. And you have these little blocks here to help identify which type one you have. Now, you're going to need this little screw here from your motherboard set to help you put in your SATA in place. Now, if you don't know which one it is, you can easily just take your SATA in. There's only one way you could put it in. This part goes in, and this is the part where you screw down in. So you can just do it like that. You can see, okay, you see how far you need to go. So let's go ahead and get that in place. You're gonna take off this little film here before you put it back on. That way the heat sink can work. So we're gonna remove this real quick, then put it back on, be good to go. RAM, we are going with the Crosshair Dominator Platinum RGB 32 gigs. DDR4 at 3466 megahertz. So it's gonna be two graphics, uh, two RAMs I'm going to be installing in, each with 16 gigs. And because this motherboard, this is why it's important that you read your manual, they're gonna be dual channel. So they're gonna be going into the two ports furthest away from the motherboard. So let's get them installed.
All right, now roughly you got a lot of the key essential components connected now. You've got your motherboard up, you've got your processor in, you've got your first hard drive you're using the SATA, and, and you got your RAM in. So next we're gonna worry about the power supply, putting in the actual motherboard, putting in your graphics card, and a few more things. So next we're going to work on taking out the stock fans and prepping to put the new fans in. So we're gonna be removing this fan and removing this fan. And to get this top one, we just gotta pop off this part. Oops, sorry about that. Then unscrew it from the top. All right, so these are the fans that we're gonna be replacing it with. We're using the ML120 Pro LEDs. We're gonna be using this to put in the back to replace the stock fan. And I may put another fan up top because the cooling system already comes with two fans itself, but we'll just see. But this one is definitely going in the back. Now it's always important to pay attention to the airflow. All these will have a little indention on it. You can bring it up a little bit closer so you guys can see. But there's a little indention right here. Sorry if it's not really focusing in well. Get a little bit better on it. But there's a small little indention, there we go. A small little indention that tells you the flow of the air going. Because you always want to have a good balance. There we go. You always want to have a good balance of airflow coming in and pushing the hot air out. And like I said, for mine, I'm going to have air coming in from the sides and going and the hot air going out from the top. So let's get these installed. All right, for our cooling system, like I said, we are going with the H100 RGB Platinum. I uh, gotta put that together, so I'm not gonna really waste any time doing that. I'm gonna put it together offline and just mount it and show you guys. But pretty much you have the fans that come with it, the actual radiator cooler, and the IO part that you actually put on your processor. Now, like I said, this is when it's important to read your motherboard because you find out what type of mounts you need because you'll be either using one of these type of mounts, I know it's kind of hard to see with the white paper, but you'll be using this type of mount, you'll be putting it on the back of the motherboard so you can mount that properly. Now, this already has thermal paste on it. If you want to use a thermal paste, that's fine. I got some of my own thermal paste just to be safe, but I'm just gonna go with that since it's already pre-applied. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this together and then we'll take care of that. We have our motherboard ready to go that we put into the case. We've got our cooling system set up. All we gotta do now is once we get the motherboard locked into place, we're gonna put the AIO on top of it. As you see, it already has thermal paste on it, so I'm not gonna add any more. I'll remove this and place this on top of the processor. But right now, let's go ahead and get the motherboard in place, and then we'll connect everything, and then we'll work on the power supply next.
All right, now that we have the motherboard installed, we're going to go ahead and hook up the cooler to, to it. And then from there, we're going to go ahead and start connecting the wires to the motherboard. And then we'll work on putting in the power supply. All right, now that we got our motherboard installed, I started hooking up a couple of the cables, but we're gonna take care of that later. What we're gonna worry about next is hooking up the power supply. And for our power supply, we are gonna be using the HX1000. Now, it's important that if you have a bottom port, exposed port like this here, then you'll wanna have your fan at the bottom so all that heat can blow out. Now, if it doesn't have a bottom open bay like that, then you'll have to have it up and have the heat go up, which means it'll just be going up forward. But because it has a bottom, we're going to have the fan down. So we're going to get that installed and then we'll work on the graphics card. Then we'll connect everything and then do a boot test. All right, with our power supply in place, all I'm gonna do now is go ahead and put my other hard drive in. This case actually has a bunch of standouts that I can use to put it in, and it has these little slider cases here. So all I'm gonna do is put the hard drive in there and put it in, and it actually goes in through the back of the case. So I'm gonna go ahead and knock that out. Simple little quick thing, just put it on, pinch it, put it in. And this one can support to a lot of drives. So I'll probably be getting at least two more drives later on down the road just for extra space. And it also can support regular H HHD drives and SSD drives. So good thing about this. Well, I'll go ahead and get this put in. So now to one of the best parts of this video. We're going to be putting in the graphics card and then we're going to connect everything to the motherboard, do our cable management, then do our boot test, make sure everything is good. And we're going to be putting in this bad boy right here. So we're going to go ahead and get it installed. So when you put your graphics card in, you want to put it in the top slot right here for the best performance. We're going to have to remove these real quick so we can uh, get it in place. And once we get it in place, be good to go. All right, so now we've got all the key essential pieces in. We got a processor, a motherboard, graphics card, power supply. We replaced our case fans. We've added our hard drives. All we gotta do now is just run power to the run power to the pieces we need. Connect everything on the motherboard. Then we can do a boot test. It'll be good to go. So I won't bore you guys with all that connecting type of stuff. I'll go ahead and do all that off, and then we'll do a quick boot. All right, everybody, it's time for the moment of truth. Before we close up the back and finish doing the cable management, we'll make sure it powers up and we get a, and get a boot system. That's good. Then we'll finish up the cable management, install windows, and be good to go. So let's see how it turns out. That's definitely a good sign. RGB lighting's coming off on the motherboard. It's a nice crisp color. Let's turn her on. All right, keyboard's got power. And we are good to go. Let's see, no USB devices detected. Detected one keyboard, one mouse. It's picking up the SATA ports. 
new CPU installed, pre-center setup to configure your system. We are good to go, everybody. Let's take a look and see what we got here. Let's see, it's picking up the motherboard, it's picking up the Intel Core, i9-9900, 3.5. It's picking up the RAM, so we know we got that in right. We are good to go, so all we gotta do now is just install the, install the operating system. So I will do that outside. I hope you guys enjoyed this build. It was definitely a great learning experience for me. I learned a lot because like I said, this was my first PC build. So I am beyond excited right now. But I hope you guys enjoyed it. Definitely be looking forward to some more content coming out. Don't know when I'll be doing another PC build, but hey, possibility comes up, why not? Hope you guys enjoyed it and I will catch you guys in the next video.